Hi, everyone. I'm Norm Linsky. I'm the Chapter 94 Secretary, and welcome to today's virtual support group. Today, we welcome members and friends of Chapter 94, the National Capital Chapter, as well as other friends, both near and far. All VIPs today. Uh, and today, we have a special VIP uh, that will be joining us at some point, Mended Hearts. National Vice President Marvin Kaiser, who many of you know, will be joining us in Florida in a little bit. Marvin is one of Mended Heart's best, but the reality is you're all one of Mended Heart's best. Uh, we also welcome new friends from the Salisbury, Maryland region as well. Welcome aboard. Uh, with the onset of COVID, we've all become virtual uh, we, in, in terms of communicating. Uh, we have virtual support groups the second Sunday of every month. Uh, at 3 p.m. Uh, we alternate months between open forum as we did last month and featured speakers on important topics as we're doing today. You're all always welcome to these groups. All of our speaker programs are archived on our YouTube channel. Today we have a very, very, very special guest speaker, uh, Annie Clift, RDN, LDN from <clears throat> Anne Arundel Medical Center in Annapolis, Maryland. By training, Annie is a registered, registered dietitian with many years of experience in the field. Uh, her day job, and I suspect her night job and weekends job too, is as a clinical dietitian in the hospital and, and without patients, working with many, many hundreds, if not thousands, of heart patients and families and other patients every single year. Annie does extraordinarily important work, and she is at the absolute top of her game in all things diet dietetics and nutrition. Annie's been working very hard to prepare a presentation on hot topics and areas of likely interest to all of you. Uh, after her presentation, we've allotted plenty of time for questions and answers. So start thinking about questions that you might have. Uh, we, as Jeff will go into this if need be, but use the Zoom chat feature for now to submit your questions, be thinking about those, questions and start submitting them. You can submit them to everybody or just uh, ju just to Jeff. Jeff will uh, read them out. Uh, as always, uh, we, as don't, always we don't give don't medical, give advice. medical advice. That's between you and your healthcare provider. But with the holidays coming up, we look forward to an especially lively discussion today. And with that, let us virtually welcome with a big round of virtual applause, Ms. Annie Clift. share. So thank you, Norm, for that lovely intro. Um, it's good to have everybody today. And um, I used to work outpatient in a facility where we did um, virtual support groups, and they were great. We did them before COVID. Um, because sometimes at 7pm, you just want to stay home. So um, I'm glad to have everybody today. It's good to meet everyone. Um, I'm going to focus a little bit on healthy eating during the holidays. That was kind of the subject that I was guided toward. Um, and then I do have some different objectives. So I'm going to go through optimal health for the holidays, um, but also any time of year. Um, I'm going to go into cold weather optimal health, and then I'm going to go into some current event things specifically for COVID. Um, and I have some cool stuff that I'm excited to show everyone. So I'm sure just because of the population that I have, I'm sure you all have heard of the Mediterranean diet. Um, it really is the best way of eating. I hate to use, I hate to use the term diet, um, but the Mediterranean way of life, the Mediterranean way of eating, um, it really is the best way to prevent um, and treat chronic and future diseases. And what I love most about the Mediterranean diet is that it's not like it was created. Um, actually, people noticed um, that that part of the world had the least amount of chronic diseases, of cancers, of lifestyle diseases in general, and so physicians wanted to know why. So it's not like they put a bunch of people in a study group and found this out. They just noticed generally that this group of the world really didn't have too many chronic disease, lifestyle-related disease issues going on, and then they studied how they naturally were living their lives. So I think that that's really cool. Um, lots of studies show that it results in weight loss, prevents heart attack, strokes, type 2 diabetes, premature death. So my favorite way of eating. 
basics are just focusing on plant-based. So fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, potatoes, sweet potatoes. You want to have whole grains. I love that it lists herbs and spices. We're finding out more and more um, about turmeric and just the anti-inflammatory cinnamon, um, the anti-inflammatory benefits of these different spices that exist. So I think that's pretty cool. And then extra virgin olive oil. Um, so those wonderful heart healthy fats that help keep our blood sugars nice and steady, help us feel nice and full and satisfied, um, some good omega threes that can help protect our hearts as well. Moderation wise, we want to focus on lean proteins, poultry, eggs, low fat dairy and cheeses. So, um, cheeses and yogurts are wonderful, but you want to look for skim or the 1% or the 2%. So leaving those whole fat dairy options in the same category as the red meat. So maybe once a month, maybe twice a month, um, having that red meat or those full fat dairy options. You want to avoid those sugar sweetened beverages, those added sugars, processed meats. Um, the main reason that I love the Mediterranean diet and especially focusing on these plant-based, so fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, um, potatoes, and whole grains, is that it's being found more and more that the antioxidants that exist in fruits and vegetables, which are heart protective, health protective, um, help decrease the inflammation in our bodies, it's being found more and more that they're actually attached to the fibers in food. So that's why eating the whole vegetable, the whole um, the whole almond, the whole lentil, that's why eating that whole fruit um, or that whole food piece is found to be so important because again, those antioxidants associated with those foods are attached to the fiber. So can we, you know, put blueberries and apples and other things um, in a juicer and get the same benefits? we're finding out more and more that the answer is no. And so eating that whole fruit is a much better option. So that's why I love the Mediterranean diet, because if you look at this list here, the first one, two, three, four, five, six, everything on that, <laughs> um, in that first category of what to eat, it's all plant-based, and all plant-based foods are full of fibers, okay? So this is a big slide, lots of information on it, but this is just breaking down categorically what foods to choose within the different um, food group options. My biggest thing, and I don't expect y'all to read this super quickly, but the biggest takeaway I want you to take from this page is that fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, legumes and tubers, notice that a lot of the things mentioned here are vibrant in color. So I'm sure you've heard eat the rainbow and I don't mean Skittles. Um, sometimes I do because you know, you gotta live every once in a while, but um, you want to eat the variety of colors, so getting as many of those dark colors as possible. That's the darkness of things. That's where those nutrients live. And, it, and then, again, because they're plant-based, they're attached to those fibers, and that as our body breaks those fibers down, that's how we get those antioxidants and the um, anti-inflammatory effects. Um, I could go through each one of these foods and tell you what it potentially has and how that's health beneficial. Um, we don't have all night though. So my general takeaway is the more dark in color, the more vibrant in color, the better. So think, and I, I tell patients, think of the rainbow. So with purple, think eggplant. Um, with blue, think blueberries. With green, think kale and collards and broccoli. Um, so think of, you know, what's really dark in those different color categories. Um, and then that's what you want to focus most toward. Um, for fish and seafood, notice cold water fish. So salmon, sardines, trout, tuna, mackerel. So cold water fish, they have more of those omega-3 fatty acids. Um, you wanna focus on a little bit more of the middle feeders. So the top feeders are gonna be the ones that no one else eats in the ocean. So that would be the tuna, that's like your top feeder. The middle feeder would be more your salmon. Your bottom feeder would be more of your um, tilapia, shrimp, crabs. Focusing more on the middle feeders, um, less likely to have any kind of contaminants. Um, and then the top feeder and the bottom feeder, maybe they're once every two weeks, once, once a month, um, depending on your preference and the season. I'm a big fan of eating seasonally. So, um, you know, crabs, when they're, when they taste good out of Chesapeake Bay, I'm spoiled my husband crabs, um, but eating a little bit seasonally, I think is a lovely thing. Um, I'm not sure if we have any quail eggs around here, but if we do, please send them my way. I've always wanted to try one. So, 
Um, think of this as the food pyramid that we kind of all grew up learning. So we want to kind of flip it on its head a little bit. We still want to have fruits and vegetables as the base. And then as we go up, that's where the whole grains come in. Um, herbs and spices and then healthy fats. So notice that these are the plant-based fats though. So nuts, seeds, avocados, um, extra virgin olive oil. Okay. These are just some different ideas for snacks and for eating at restaurants. Um, so I'm sure that you all have learned this before. Um, my biggest thing here is don't let yourself get bored. Do you have to snack? No, but if you are hungry, have stuff on hand. Um, and don't get bored. You know, sometimes I just get bored of the same thing all, all day. Um, but I really love lately, I'm on like a carrot, carrots and hummus kick. Um, I love having, uh, having edamame in the freezer and I'll just pop that in the microwave and um, I'll have that as an afternoon snack. I love a good handful of nuts. Um, I'll throw in some dark chocolate just for something sweet in there. Um, leftovers from the night before, that's a big one. So whatever you had last night, is there a small portion of it that you can have mid-morning or in the afternoon? Um, in terms of Mediterranean restaurant eating, so you always want to start your meal with a salad, a soup, a broth-based soup, um, or a vegetable-based appetizer. So, and you can really do this anywhere. It doesn't have to be an American-style restaurant or um, like an Italian-style restaurant. You can start with lettuce wraps at an Asian style restaurant, or you can start with um, the edamame, like I mentioned. So lots of different options. Focus on that plant-based thing to start with. Fill up on that. And then that way, if something on the menu just looks super appealing to you, then have your fun a little bit. You know, maybe, maybe restaurants aren't a thing that you do too often. So when you do go, you want to indulge a little bit. Um, I'm a big fan of having your cake and eating it too, but fill up on a little bit better option. And then that way, maybe the not as great option, if it's like a red meat or something, maybe you have, you know, a third of it, and then you can have the other two thirds the next day and the next day. So having your main entree lasts you a little bit longer than just that meal. Okay. Um, big thing, just having that bread basket not even come because full of butter. Um, is there a way that you can get some whole grain bread to dip in olive oil? Um, so those are always options. I have to just say, hey, please don't bring me the bread basket. <laughs> it's just, it doesn't work for me. So, um, and you can say that too. Um, so don't forget that. Generally foods to avoid. So we wanna avoid added sugars. The reason for that is because it makes our blood sugar spike. When our blood sugar spikes, it causes inflammation. When we have inflammation, it makes it more difficult for our bodies to fight disease because our bodies are fighting that inflammation instead. Refined grains, same thing. So that can spike our blood sugars. Again, we don't want all that inflammation going on. Trans fats, um, our body doesn't really know what trans fats are. So we wanna have things that are as natural as possible. So real butter, real olive oil, real avocados. Um, I'm a big fan of having a really good like, piece of cheese if I want a little bit of fat. Um, and then just being aware of the portion size. My biggest rule of thumb, pun intended, is about the size of your thumb um, that should be the maximum amount of fat that you have per meal, okay? Um, being careful of those refined oils. So they're just too much of them is actually causing omega-6s instead of omega-3s, and then those 6s are causing inflammation as well. Processed meats, super duper salty. We're not aware of the fat content. Um, that's like the number one thing that's gonna help just clog our arteries, causing heart attacks and strokes, okay? The other big thing is things that are labeled. So we know that like tasty cakes and snack wells and um, I'm blanking on the other thing, but things like the, like the things that are labeled like Weight Watchers and South Beach Diet, um, when you're in a bind, are those okay to maybe have in your purse or have in your glove compartment? Yeah, but maybe something that you have once or twice a month. Um, usually foods that are labeled in that way are incredibly highly processed, um, usually increasing the sodium content and taking away from the fiber content and the other lovely things that that food may have. And again, the antioxidants in our foods, we're learning more and more, are attached to the fiber. So we want to get that good high fiber. Not really nutrition related, but worth mentioning, physical activity. So we want to get about 30 minutes most days of the week. Um, and this is really doctor specific. So depending on what you and your physician have discussed regarding the safety of your ability to be physically active, that's what I want you to do. Um, but a good goal to strive for, whether that be a month from now or five years from now, would be 30 minutes most days of the week. So rule of thumb would be about five days a week. Resistance training, 
incredibly important as we age. Once we turn 30, I'm over 30. <laughs> Once we turn 30, um, our body's ability to use protein uh, and keep lean body mass, so keep our muscles, decreases. So that makes things really difficult um, because that just means that we have to eat more and more protein in order to um, make sure that we have enough lean body mass. So um, we can eat more protein and we can continue to exercise the resistance training. So weight training, yoga, Pilates, um, those are just a few examples, but anything you're doing to build muscle is considered resistance training. Stress management, so fight or flight. So we all know that in, you know, back in the day um, that fight or flight was incredibly important for us for survival. Um, unfortunately, sometimes we aren't you know, living in um, caves anymore and needing to run away from a woolly mammoth very quickly. So the fight or flight that helped us live um, you know, thousands of years ago doesn't exist really anymore in modern day society. Uh, but that fight or flight still does exist. So what happens is when we have constant stress, um, cortisol releases in our bodies and it makes our bodies break things down because when that cortisol released back in the day, we were running away from the woolly mammoth. So we couldn't begin digesting things um, because we had to run away. Um, whereas now that cortisol being released, it's because of that stress. So it's telling our body, hey, don't digest this. Hey, don't break down that food that you just ate. Um, I need your heart to beat faster. And I need your lungs to, to move quicker because we need to deliver all these nutrients to um, the organs that you're using to run away. That can be really harmful to our, our health and to our respiratory system because they're working harder than they need to at baseline. Um, so for now, sitting at our desk can be incredibly stressful if we have a deadline or it's been a, it's been a crazy few months in America. Um, so just being sure that we are managing that stress and keeping those cortisol levels low. Um, sleep is incredibly important too. I'll go into that a little bit more in a second, but seven to eight hours nightly. Some people, their whole lives have never needed seven to eight hours. And please tell me your secrets. That sounds lovely. I would love to get more done throughout the day. Um, but we need to get into that rapid eye movement sleep. We need to get into that REM sleep in order for our body to rest, our body to recover, our cells to turn over. That's where our immunity lives. So we're up all day, we're doing stuff when we're sleeping and when our body is getting the recovery that it needs, that's actually where our immunity lives. And when our body is truly fighting off chronic disease and acute diseases like COVID, the flu, pneumonia, anything like that. Okay. Um, these are three different websites that have some really lovely Mediterranean diet recipes, breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner. Um, I think that the holidays are going to be a little different this year, just considering we're all going to be a little bit closer to home. I do think, though, if you are going places or next year when we hopefully can all, um, you know, be really, really close with our loved ones, um, I think having a staple thing that you prepare for a week in advance, you know, this is what I'm going to make, this is what I'm going to plan to eat when I go to this party, I know this is best for me, um, I think that you can't rely on a host to take care of you regarding your nutrition needs. I think that you need to be the driver of your own bus. And part of that means um, bringing the correct things and the things that are going to work for you. Um, it's like a dream of mine to be like, oh, Annie's coming. I know she's going to bring that rosemary, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So um, I love being known for foods. I am a bit of a foodie, obviously. Um, but maybe you can become known for some delicious dish that people are asking you the recipe for. And I, I don't think there's a greater compliment. Um, so moving on in general to nutrition for colder weather. So thinking of everything regarding the Mediterranean diet continues on to colder weather. Um, but there still is just some extra things to point out. So you want to get as much variety as possible. So like I said, eating the rainbow, getting those dark colors. Um, consider a multivitamin, especially if you're over the age of 65. Reason for that is because as we age, the acidity of our stomach dramatically decreases. And the acidity of our stomach is a good thing because it helps break down nutrients. So as that acidity decreases, our body's ability to open up certain nutrients also decreases. So our body's ability to absorb nutrients decreases. So if you look at a one a day for 45 plus, 55 plus, 65 plus, the 65 plus one a day will likely have vitamins and minerals in a different form. 
And that's because that form can be more openable by a lower acid stomach. So you always wanna have um, a multivitamin that's age appropriate. And you always wanna look for this NSF seal. So the, the bad thing about supplements is they're not really regulated by the government. Um, but you do want to look for that NSF seal. And so I left the, the website right there for you so you could look up um, what the icon looks like. But this is a third party, um, it's a third party company that assesses nutrients. They just pull things right off the shelf randomly and open them up and break them down and make sure that they have everything that they do have. And then also make sure that they're safe for ingestion. So um, I'm not specific to brands. There's so many out there. And the second I love one, there's like a new one that I love more. So I never really recommend one. I say, talk to your doctor, um, make sure it has the NSF seal. Um, and then also just make sure that it works for you. Some people are really sensitive. They hurt their stomachs and other forms work differently. So um, especially 65 plus, but talk to your physician. You wanna stop eating about two to three hours before bedtime. So I talked about how important sleep is, but actually getting that REM sleep, getting that rapid eye movement, we need two types of hormones to release for that to happen, um, ghrelin and leptin. Ghrelin and leptin are only released unless we have an empty stomach. So sleeping um, about two to three hours after our last meal, I mentioned that in the holidays because there are so many parties and things going on. And I don't know, at Thanksgiving between my husband's family and mine, we eat from like 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's exhausting. <laughs> um, so just being aware of, okay, when is the last party? When am I going to bed? How am I getting home? Um, just being aware and kind of planning out those things. Um, if you're at a party really late and you want to eat late, maybe you can nap earlier in the day so that you can go to bed a little bit later. So just kind of planning for what that day is going to look like. Stress management, I already mentioned that. Come the colder weather, that's when the holidays are here too. This year especially, um, is it okay to just, if you order a gift online, to also just get it gift wrapped? You know, reduce the things that you need to do throughout the day so you can get things already delivered to your house or already delivered to your loved ones that are ready to go. Um, is there a way that you can look up on Walmart and make um, an account there so that you can just pick up your groceries and have them put in the trunk of your car instead of having to mask up, go inside, do all your grocery shopping, be exposed. Um, even if it's, I, I haven't looked it up, but even if having um, grocery delivery services are a little bit of a fee, for me, if I can have groceries delivered from November to March, that fee might be worth it to me just from a stress management point um, and from a you know social distancing point as well. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. I'll show you on another, um, on another slide about why this is so important, especially for COVID. Um, but the, the sicknesses that we tend to get more in the cold weather months um, tend to be more lung related. So the flu, pneumonia, bronchitis. So the thinner that our oral secretions and that our mucus in our lungs can be, the better our bodies are at clearing them the thicker that those secretions are, the more likely they're gonna stay put um, and the more likely that they're gonna infect our lungs or something else. So talk to your physician. Um, if you have heart disease, if you have heart failure, or if you have some kidney issues, you have gotta talk to a doctor um, if you have um, some kind of fluid restriction. Um, but in general, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. And then I'll show you a, a COVID specific recommendation. Using the hunger satiety scale to never overeat is also another lovely recommendation all the time, but I really make my best effort to remember this um, during the holidays. One reason is because I wanna be a good social person. I don't like being too full, um, being uncomfortable, not being able to converse with everybody at a gathering. Um, so that's one reason. Um, I also really enjoy eating, so I do wanna be able to try a bit of it, a bit of that. So once it becomes seasonally, um, I start to reduce my portion sizes a lot. Instead of taking three things, I take one thing um, just because I do wanna have the opportunity to try different things. And like I said, I wanna talk to people. I wanna feel comfortable standing up, walking around. I don't wanna be over full, get sluggish, have to sit down, that's not fun. Um, I love this hunger satiety scale too because all, everything I just talked about was not being too full. But it also does talk about how you'd want to start eating when you feel at about a three or a four. 
So if you know that you have a holiday party, if you know you have Thanksgiving, have breakfast, have some lunch. When you're over hungry, you overeat. So, you know, begin eating when you feel that little bit of hunger. When you feel that you could eat, it, you probably should. Don't hold off until you get to that event where you can kind of gorge yourself. Um, so never allow yourself to get over hungry because when you're over hungry, that's when you overeat. Um, I learned about the hunger satiety scale in my internship and I teach it to everyone. I think it's such a lovely tool. Um, some use a scale of one to 10. My biggest thing where you see where the five is, um, where it says feel full, not stuffed or bloated. Um, in general, it says food lasts three to four hours. So I want you to think too, if you think you can fit three to four more bites in, that's when I want you to stop. Reason for that is because it takes our stomachs about 20 minutes to communicate with our brains that it's full. So if you stop eating when you can fit about three to four, sometimes even you know four to seven more bites in, chances are that once your stomach communicates to your brains, you actually can't fit any more in, but it just takes longer. Um, so it, you know, rule of thumb, if you think you can fit three to five more bites in, you're done, okay? Because in 15 minutes, you'll really be done. So specifically for COVID, um, some certain nutrients to be aware of are iron, zinc, vitamin C, vitamin D. So iron, zinc, and vitamin C have always been a really big part of immunity. Um, food sources for that, so iron is going to be meat, um, poultry, chicken, um, and then also dark green, dark leafy greens, um, pinto beans, kidney beans, so again, thinking dark. Um, the great thing about animal-based iron is that our bodies absorb it really well. Plant-based iron, thinking specifically Mediterranean diet, um, plant-based iron needs vitamin C for it to be opened up. So in order for our bodies to absorb plant-based iron, vitamin C needs to be paired with it. So um, maybe you're having spinach and maybe you have a small glass of orange juice on the side, or maybe you're having um, a smoothie and you um, have mixed berries. So maybe it's cherries, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries. I like to buy frozen berries. Um, so there's your vitamin C and all those berries. And then maybe you're throwing in a handful of spinach or a handful of kale and there's your iron. So the two are working together in order for you to absorb them. Zinc is going to be lots of nuts and legumes. So if you follow a Mediterranean style of eating, your zinc is wonderful. Um, vitamin D, not many good food sources for vitamin D. That mainly comes in fish with bones. Um, so like canned sardines. I don't know about you, but I don't eat that often. Um, vitamin D comes from the sun. We don't get much of that um, because we wear sunscreen. So we're taking away skin cancer, but who knows what's happening um, with our decreased vitamin D intake. Um, so that's the one thing where I really do recommend getting that checked with your physician um, and then supplementing accordingly. For my parents, my parents are 62. Um, I talked to them about making sure that they take a vitamin D supplement, um, especially between like Thanksgiving and Easter, because that's the winter time. That's when our bodies are for the, the sun is further away from the earth. And that's when we're likely um, to have a decreased amount of vitamin D. A lot of dietitians in general, we recommend getting outside kind of before 11 a.m. without sunscreen on for about 20 minutes. So is that when you could get some physical activity in? Could you go for a quick walk? Um, could you do some gardening? Is there an outdoor activity that you enjoy? Could you, you know, play hopscotch with your kids? Or, you know, what is it that you could maybe do before 11, before noon, um, just because we don't want you to get sunburnt, but we do want you to absorb the vitamin D without sunscreen on. So um, with COVID specifically, so I'm sure you've all heard that the main or one of the main things that we're noticing is a decreased, you know, no taste and no smell. Um, because people have no taste, because people have no smell, they're just automatically eating less. Um, then we're also seeing GI symptoms. We're seeing a lot of diarrhea. So even if you're not hungry, um, and even in this seasonal time, so even if you don't have um, any symptoms of COVID-19, thinking about making sure that your plate has at least the size of your palm of a lean protein. And again, I'll show you this paper um, that I think is really helpful, but at least the size of your palm of a lean protein. We all have different protein needs. We all have different sizes of palms. Um, hopefully you always bring your palms with you wherever you go. So no matter where you're eating, you can measure that out for yourselves. 
Um, but maintaining that lean body mass that we do have, we're noticing is more and more important um, for recovery and for survival um, for the COVID-19 patient. Um, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Again, please check with your physicians though regarding that. Um, another big thing, now is not the time for weight loss. Now is not the time for um, reducing any of your caloric intake. The reason for that is because when people are hit with COVID, their intake dramatically decreases. And then while they're recovering, whether it be at home or in the hospital, um, their appetites just are incredibly low. So now is the time to maintain what you have, um, you know, make healthy choices, stick with Mediterranean lifestyle. If you lose some weight from eating that way, that's okay. Um, but now isn't the time to like be losing two pounds a week. We can talk about that once COVID is on. Um, have bland foods on hand. So diarrhea is happening um, and fatigue. The fatigue is a big one that I forgot to mention, but just generally like not wanting to do anything. So maybe having some minute rice, some chicken noodle soup, um, some frozen chicken pot pies, you know, whatever comforting meal exists for you, throw in some in the freezer. Maybe you pre-make it when you're feeling well. And then just in case, like you have some things in the freezer for you. Um, and then bananas, rice, applesauce, toast, that's the brat diet. So having those on hand as well, just because we are seeing that diarrhea, hydration I've mentioned, when you have diarrhea, you become dehydrated. So we want to make sure that you um, have all the tools that you need to take care of yourself um, if you're recovering from COVID at home. Um, this was a really great handout that I thought was like very quick and dirty. I highlighted this because this gave me some hope. Um, so this is from Aspen, which is what dietitians use um, to determine nutrition needs for patients who are being fed by a tube. Um, and then they have lots of really lovely, so this specifically is for um, nutrition and hydration. So for patients recovering at home. So this is for patients that are not hospitalized and are recovering from COVID-19 at home. So these are the general recs. Uh, but I thought that it was great that about 12% of people that are affected with COVID-19 require hospitalization. So 88% of those other people are able to recover at home, which is a lovely quote. And I wish the news would talk about that a little bit more. Um, but in general, I wanted to show you all this. So general requirements, so about three liters of fluid per day, the average recommendation is two. So with COVID, because of fevers, because of um, your increased metabolism when you're having that fever and when your body's trying to fight something, the recommended fluid intake goes up to three liters per day. Um, calories, so the last time I recommended 2,500 calories was to like an adolescent boy. <laughs> so very rarely um, do I go up that high in calories, but again, because fevers are so high um, and because people are having diarrhea, so they're intaking food, but their bodies are getting rid of it very quickly. So overall, calorically, we're recommending um, a much more increased amount. Protein 75 to 100 grams per day. Um, average recommendation is 60 to 80. So this also was showing 75 to 100 is an increase. So that's where I mentioned um, making an effort for every single time you're eating the size of your palm of a lean protein, okay? Um, you never wanna get thirsty. So when you're, if you're thirsty, it's a little too late. So two to four ounces every 15 minutes. So have something by you, sip. Um, I'm a bad dietitian today. I just have my cup. Normally, I have a straw with my cup. For some reason, I don't know if it's laziness. If I have a straw, I drink so much more water. Um, if it's very cold, I drink it better. Um, and then I also tend to do better if it's a little bit flavored. So I'll cut up strawberries and throw it in. Or um, I also really love an herbal tea, so just like mint, um, cinnamon tea. I love that. So I'll have that at night when it cools down a little bit. Um, so thinking of ways to hydrate yourself without sugar being added um, is a really great option too. Okay. You want to have a high calorie, high protein diet, try to eat six times a day. I don't eat six times a day, um, but maybe reducing. So again, this is if you have COVID, this isn't um, if you just want to prevent having it. Um, and I'll check with Norm and see if this handout can get, be sent to you all just so that you have this just in case, um, because I think that this is a really, really helpful handout. Um, but eating six to about six times a day um, and really focusing on that brat diet that I mentioned because um, we don't want to cause constipation, but we want to prevent that, that potential diarrhea for you. Um, so again, hydration, hydration, and then just having some nice bland things on hand. Um, and then from a stress management standpoint, you know, who are you willing to accept help from? 
who are you trusting? Can, you know, neighbors and family members and other loved ones, can they stop by and put food on your porch? Um, I don't know about you, but I think sharing a meal is just one of the biggest ways of showing someone that you love them and you care. So if someone, if someone that I knew needed help, I would love to help them. So do you have a plan? Okay, if I do become sick, where is somewhere safe that I know my dog won't get to my casserole that my neighbor dropped off kind of thing. So maybe just having that plan in place. Um, and again, having some things ready to go. If you're, if you're well and healthy now, what could you maybe make um, that you know you love that you could throw a few um, in your freezer just in case? So if you never need them, lovely. But maybe you have a neighbor or someone that does need some help and you can just pull that right out. Stuff stays good in the freezer for up to a year. So I don't think, I don't think a pre-planned meal in a freezer is ever a bad idea. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, I feel like I talked a little while, so I hope that um, I covered most stuff. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions and if I don't know the answers to get back to you with them all. So um, floor is yours. Um, I will ask you some questions that have been submitted. Uh, okay. I, I fixed it so people can unmute themselves, but I don't know if that, that's necessary. Um, you did ask a question, Adam asked, Adam's asked a question about vitamin C and D. Um, okay. Ended, but I, you, you did address that in your presentation, but you could summarize again, I think. Are vitamin okay. C and D recommended is this question. So vitamin D recommendations are specific to what your blood looks like. So if you're in, so in general, and this is general, um, less than 30, so if you have less than 30 for vitamin D, no need to supplement. Um, some physicians may feel differently, especially during these times of COVID. I read a study that people that did the best and didn't get um, COVID were, their numbers for vitamin D was in the 70s. So I would say get those blood numbers checked um, and then have your physician let you know what needs to be supplemented. There's different scales. So if your vitamin D is between 20 and 25, a certain recommendation is gonna be given. If your vitamin D is between 25 and 30, a different recommendation is going to be given. So I can't give a broad recommendation. Um, I can just say to get that checked with your physician. Okay. Vitamin, C, vitamin C is water soluble. So there's no real upper limit. Um, I don't really recommend a specific vitamin C supplement. I recommend bulking your intake with foods high in vitamin C, which are fruits and vegetables um, and eating seasonally. So clementines, oranges, um, strawberries, any kind of berry, that's going to be a really good option. Um, if you love orange juice, go for it. Just not more than four to eight ounces per sitting. I wouldn't do that more than twice a day. Um, so I don't think a vitamin C supplement is necessary. It's really in all the food that we consume. Um, and again, it's water soluble. So getting it checked, I don't really think is worth it either. I just think eating foods high in vitamin C are something to pay attention to kind of between Halloween and Easter, especially. Andy, what do you think about intermittent, intermittent fasting? In other words, eight to 12 hours eating, eight to 12 hours fasting each day. Yeah, so I think intermittent fasting is really cool and cutting edge. I think there needs to be so much more research done on it. Um, the only evidence-based things that I feel comfortable recommending it for are people with dementia and other neurological decline. Um, there is some really interesting stuff regarding metabolism and... Um, regarding immunity, but nothing evidence-based worth that I feel comfortable saying, hey, general public, please do this. So I think sit tight on that, um, but I wouldn't recommend it for the general person. Okay. Uh, what about organic foods? Do you think they're healthier than conventional foods or are they healthier only for whole foods problem? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this is such a good and frustrating question. Um, because in terms of organic, especially for fruits, it means that other pesticides have not been, it means that chemicals and pesticides haven't been used to, to maintain that fruit. Um, so calorically, nutrient wise, um, fruits and vegetables, really no difference whether it's organic or not. Um, in terms of animal proteins, so dairy um, and then eating meat, eggs, um, 
I think nutritionally that, especially for dairy, so a big thing that we're noticing for not organic dairy is that there are human growth hormones um, and there are antibiotics in especially dairy products that have not, that are not organic. So those human growth hormones, are, are we ingesting them and then that leading to um, early puberty or um, certain types of cancers? Or is it leading to all of us being bigger? Are we all, um, is weight more of an issue now than it was 40 years ago because we just are full of HGH? Um, and then in terms of antibiotics, I don't know about you, but I want to give any doctor an opportunity to fight anything that I have. So the less antibiotics my body is used to, the more comfortable I am with that. So um, the way that I tell patients is whatever works in your budget is what I want you to do. I would make an effort for your dairy products and your eggs to be as organic as possible. Um, and then for the fruits and vegetables, paying attention to the dirty dozen. Um, I'll find this website and I'll email this to you, Sam, when I can find it, but there's a really helpful website that you put in your, um, your zip code and depending on where you live, it then determines where in your area, um, what fruits and vegetables you should be buying organic. Um, and because that's indicating that maybe, maybe apples are really hard to grow where you live. So people have to use pesticides to keep them um, growing healthfully. And so they'll recommend organic ones. Um, so let me find that and then that can give you the best list um, in terms of how to just make the best, the best choices as a shopper and as a consumer. Um, but to kind of answer back your question, so nutrient wise, in terms of fruits and vegetables, the answer really is no. Um, it, it really doesn't matter what you're having. Um, but in overall general health wise, I would, I would steer toward organic if it's going to work with your budget. Okay. Thank you. How about, how about if we go to an expensive grocery store and there's a whole aisle we see of high priced vitamin pills, fancy powders, little bottles with weird names and other foods. Do you think it's a waste of money or what do you think? I think it's so disease specific. Um, my general answer is that, yes, I think it's, uh, I have some questions that uh, have to do with vegetarian diet. For someone who follows a plant-based diet, what vitamins and minerals should they monitor that would be appropriate to test for considering possible deficiencies as a result of their food intake? Yep. So the biggest one would be um, any of the B vitamins, especially B12. So we only get B12 from animals. So, and that includes dairy, eggs, um, and any kind of eating meat. So if you eat completely plant-based, um, you do need to supplement B12. Um, and then I would get that level checked. And then um, a general multivitamin probably won't have enough. So you would need additional. Um, I'll look up exactly how much B12 uh, your general vegan needs. Um, but B12 is the biggest one. Most B vitamins though, I would get checked, especially B6. Um, B6 is a really interesting vitamin and we're finding more and more of its relation to mental health and just, just how it, when it's high, people generally don't have depression and anxiety and other things. Um, and the best food sources for B6 are also animals. So I would do a whole B panel, um, and then just definitely supplement that B12. Um, iron would be something to watch for if you're eating completely vegan, but if you're eating a variety, um, if you're eating those dark leafy greens and you're pairing it with vitamin C, you should be fine. Um, and then making sure that I said dark leafy greens, but also the lentils, the kidney beans. Um, there's other micronutrients that are worth looking into. More and more people are noticing an omega-3 and like a, like a fatty acid issue with people that don't consume any kind of animals. That's something else worth looking at. Um, I personally am not a really big fan of supplementing um, fish oil and things because I just, I don't think they're very high quality supplements. So making sure that your diet is full of ground flax seeds, chia seeds, walnuts, um, and then making sure that you're having them with high fat things alongside because we need fat in order to absorb them. So if you're having ground flax seed, make sure that you have that in a smoothie with some peanut butter. Um, if you're having what was another thing I mentioned? If you're having walnuts, have them with a salad that also has um, 
olive oil as a salad dressing to help the fat from that olive oil absorb the omega-3s from those walnuts. So those are the three that I would focus on, B12, iron, um, and then omega-3. Suppose that that plant-based diet person also eats eggs and fish and adds those two items. Would you change what you just revised? Uh, would you um, the only one would just be aware of that iron. Um, if you're eating eggs and fish, I don't think you need to be as worrisome of B12. Um, and I think omega-3 wise, so the yolk in eggs has plenty of omega-3s, especially if it's a grass-fed um, chicken. And then obviously salmon and cold water fish have a great amount of, of the omega-3. So if you are pretty much plant-based, but you do eat eggs and fish, then I would just be careful of the iron. I've been told that for an iron deficiency, a daily iron pill washed down with orange juice can be helpful. Have you, have you ever heard of that? Yeah. So more and more research actually is indicating that having iron every other day is the best way to absorb it. Um, and just like with vitamin D, depending on what your iron is, depends on how much would be supplemented for you. Um, I recommend getting blood checked for iron like quickly because supplementing high amounts of iron is difficult for your body to absorb. It's difficult for your body to handle. Um, lots of GI upset, lots of constipation. Um, so if eating um, a plant-based diet is something that you're interested in, which I would absolutely encourage, especially like a Mediterranean style, um, get those irons checked. And then if they're good, I would say every three months, maybe get them checked in the first year or especially seeing you know what your insurance covers um, and then taking it from there. Um, I do think though that eating meat is helpful in terms of um, absorbing that iron. So maybe if you are comfortable with having red meat, like once every two weeks, once a month, just to kind of help with those stores. Personally, I would rather have a steak every two weeks than take an iron pill every night. Um, but that's just me. So figuring out what you prefer and what works for you is, is what you should do. Right. Now, look, you know, in, in this locked in time, in this locked in time where, uh, most of our watching television, like Netflix, uh, we become addicts, you know? Do you think, and that means we're likely to stop. Okay. okay. So do you have any healthy snacking tips during our binging? Yeah, so in general, you always wanna make sure that your snack has a lean protein. Um, and then you wanna make sure that you like it. Like some people snack on things that just taste terrible that they think they're supposed to snack on. If you don't like it, then what's the point? Um, so making sure that there's a lean protein in there. So something like um, a mozzarella cheese stick or hummus or um, some trail mix or something I like to do a lot is I like to just make um, chicken salad. And then maybe I have, you know, a quarter cup to a half a cup of chicken salad with half of an apple. So that lean protein option um, and then having it with something higher in fiber. So is it a whole grain cracker or is it, you know, half of an apple or sugar snap peas with hummus? Um, so focusing on that lean protein, probably if it's a snack, maybe half the size of your palm instead of the whole size of your palm. And then pairing that with a high fiber fruit or vegetable. That's always going to be your best bet for a snack. Thank you very much for attending this afternoon's meeting. I know the weather is beautiful outside. We would like to be outside, but thank you very much for taking time out. We look forward to seeing you at every meeting. Thank you everybody for attending this monthly support meeting. Stay healthy. Thank you.